Hi, I'm Maine and this is Time Lapse Laboratory. These are chia seeds and you might recognize them from the pet, but today instead of growing them on a ceramic character, we're going to grow them on a number of different surfaces in time lapse. In order to get the chia seeds to sprout, you need to soak them in water for a period of time. I soak them and let them rehydrate until most of the seeds have fallen to the bottom and stopped floating. You can see at the end of the clip that the water began to get cloudy. This could be because of bacteria growth or something released by the seeds after being in the water. The issue with this particular set of seeds is that I had them stored poorly for years, and considering that chia seeds hold their germination power for 2-5 to five years, it shows that these seeds were not stored very well and only a few seeds actually ended up germinating. Sprouting the seeds on a flat surface like this without a soil or substrate was a challenge. I needed to dry the seeds out enough so that the gel formed by the rehydration of the seeds dehydrated and would allow for the seeds to germinate, but not dry out everything so much that the sprouts didn't have enough water to keep growing. At this point I didn't know the seeds were not viable because when the seeds pass their germination window, it doesn't really matter how dry they get because most of them aren't going to grow anyway. So I got some new seeds and decided to try again. I got the microscope out to film the rehydration of the seeds from that perspective, as well as the standard side view of the Erlmeyer flask. The typical rehydration ratio of water to seeds is 20 parts water to 1 part seeds, and I very much just eyeballed it here because I was just looking to rehydrate the seeds and not extract the gel. Keeping the seeds in focus for any time-lapse macro shot is difficult because even a few millimeters of movement completely takes the shot out of focus. At the end, in the upper right hand corner, you can see the seeds swell and begin to germinate. Here is a view of the rehydration from the side of the flask. Because I didn't mix the water well into the flask when pouring it in, and because the seeds are slightly hydrophobic, the seeds at the bottom of the flask are essentially kept dry for a full day due to the gelling process of the seeds above them. You can see the water slowly work its way through the gel into the bottom of the flask past the 27 hour mark, and then the seeds and the gel continue to expand as the seeds begin to release more gas. There's an interesting effect going on here where the seeds are still expanding, but the volume in the flask is remaining the same. So it's been a little more than a day, and funny enough, uh, the chia seeds are actually sprouting in this solution, which I actually haven't seen before. Prior to this, I've been dealing with non-viable chia seeds. The chia seeds produce this gelatinous gel. The chia gel is a polysaccharide made up of mainly crude fiber and carbohydrates, and it's used as a thickener and binder in some chia-based drinks. Because the seeds started to germinate in the flask, I rehydrated some seeds for the next shot and set up a camera on this flask to see if the seeds continued to sprout. Only the seeds stuck above the water really continue to germinate. This shot actually starts a day before because I wanted to make sure this batch of new seeds was actually going to grow. And finally, some success. The seeds really begin germinating quickly after they've been rehydrated overnight. I'm actually pretty relieved that I can germinate seeds at this point. The seeds start growing towards the filming light on the right of the table due to phototropism. I used a paper towel to help retain some moisture on the roots and prevent them from drying out. These take a few days to film and only a few hours to dry out, so anything I can do to make the process easier for myself is nice. You can see the gelling of the seeds when they hydrate and germinate. This is a very zoomed in shot and there's only a small slice of depth of field in focus, and the growing shoots quickly push the shot out of frame. After a little reposition, we can see a fly sit on the top of the plant as it circles. This circling motion of the plants is the shoots searching for the best light source, and it's a common trait in seedlings and many leafy plants that exhibit positive phototropism. In general, plants will orient their leaves to best expose them to the brightest light source for photosynthesis so that they can grow more quickly by taking in as much light as possible. This overhead shot gets a better look at the chia seeds as they germinate, and you can more clearly see the seed coat being broken open as the radicule and the pumula emerge. The radicle grows down to form the roots, and the pumula grows up to form the shoot. The roots were pushing up the entire layer of seeds in the first shot, which is why it quickly drifted out of focus. So it's been a couple of days, and the chia seeds that are on the piece of paper towel kind of only ever got that tall. Whereas the chia seeds that I threw into the terrarium with the Japanese beetles trying to find a good angle here, got much taller. And I think that's actually because they had some distance for the roots uh, to go into the soil. So I'm actually gonna throw some more chia seeds into this terrarium and hopefully get a side of the roots actually growing up in the edge of the glass. The seeds are able to germinate in a very high density with almost none of the seeds that were rehydrated not sprouting. It creates this dense, firm mat of sprouts on the paper towel, and the seeds on the edge that didn't fully sprout became dehydrated on the sheet because the plate that they were growing on was angled towards the center, causing the water on the edges to dry out much faster because it was at an angle. You can see once the plate gets flipped over, the flat ring where the water could collect. You can see just barely some of the roots coming through the cloth, or the paper towel. So these things have actually rooted down. 
I was fairly surprised that the seeds were able to grow through the porous sheets of the paper towel. You can see that not all the roots were able to grow through, and some are still present above the first layer of paper towel and the seeds. The entire mass of sprouts is firmly anchored to the paper towel, no matter how I move it. So interestingly enough, this is a folded piece of paper towel, and you can kind of see... all the roots The seeds do take a fair bit of force to detach from the paper towel and the sprout network of interconnected roots. The chia gel is still present around the seeds and on the surface of the roots even after a few days of sprouting, the sticky gel remains. So I hydrated too many chia seeds for the uh, the plate shot over there, and I threw them into the Japanese beetle aquarium. I think it's really funny that they're all moving towards the light that is the filming light, because there's no other light in this room. So we're trying to get some rooting footage of the chia seeds rooting into the ground. I wanted to get a uniform single layer of seeds for filming the roots growing down along the glass. Interestingly enough, the chia seeds naturally disperse from each other because the chia gel they create is somewhat uniform in size around the seed. You can see the distribution of the seeds in the seed hydration shots as well as on this shot, where the seed created a gel layer roughly the diameter of the seed width that they encircled. Probably a little bit overkill. Whenever I hydrated a batch of seeds, I tried to use them all, but even here I hydrated so many that the drinking cup is still almost half full. I really wanted to make sure I covered the entire surface of the ground because the roots don't grow perfectly straight, so I wanted to give myself the best chance of seeing the roots pushed up against the glass in order to see the root morphology and give myself a chance to capture anything else that I might not be expecting. This is also why I set up three different cameras for this one shot. Frequently in time-lapse shooting, it's the things that you don't expect that are the most interesting. So I'm really curious because I was using this tank to film uh, Japanese these beetles, how much of their movement is going to be captured in the chia seed video? Because I didn't empty them out prior to uh, starting this filming of the chia seeds. After the seeds are placed into the dirt, the radicule and the pumule emerge and the roots begin to grow into the soil. You can see the root hairs extend from the maturation zone and the area of the growth without the root hairs is called the elongation zone. The root hairs lateral growth from the root increases the surface area for exchange between the plant's root system and the soil. The main purpose of the root hairs is to uptake water and nutrients from the soil to the plant root, so increased surface area helps this. The root hairs can grow at a rate of one micrometer per minute, or at the rate of about a half inch per day, although the root hairs for chia don't get very long as sprouts. You can see all sorts of worms and small organisms moving through the soil as well while the roots grow. Here you can see the interface between the soil and the surface of the roots that push the entire surface of the seeds up as they grow. I thought this was a really cool effect and it was amplified by the sprouts growing up as well. All the sprouts are growing towards the filming light and seem fairly unbothered by being walked over by insects in the tank. In this shot you can see the water saturated soil throughout the growing of the seeds. I had to water the tank regularly to avoid the sprouts drying out. This shot was almost two weeks long and if you look at the left edge of the tank at the 104 hour mark you can see a burrowing Japanese beetle. Because the chia plants could root down into the soil, we're able to see not only the cotyledon leaf, which is sometimes called a seed leaf, because it's the first leaf that the plant produces out of the seed, followed by the growth of the first true leaves that in the chia plant grow 90 degrees off of the cotyledon. These leaves are present in the taller plants. At the 255 hour mark, you can see a grub present in the right hand side of the tank. This is what the tank looked like after a full 12 days of shooting. You can see the true leaves and the root mass that is present against the tank glass. The roots are this dense throughout the soil, so this glass gives us an interesting perspective on the density. I really love filming these chia seeds because there's so much going on in the footage. I was constantly seeing new things as I reviewed it, and it gave me an opportunity to relearn a lot about germination. So that's one thing you absolutely don't want to see. I realized that the ticker had not been going off. I couldn't hear the mirror going up on this particular camera and only on this camera. And I assumed for some reason that they were just in sync, even though the timers are totally not in sync. And uh, it stopped recording because the card is full. This is a 128 gigabyte card, so I am very curious to see what footage I have on it. This is a composition shot, and it's the last thing that I edited as part of this project. There's so much going on in the smaller shot, and it's only a small percentage of the whole tank. It really hammered home the sheer amount going on during the germination process, both above and below the soil. I definitely want to include more shots like this if I can in future projects. 
If you like this video, you can help me out by subscribing to Time Lapse Laboratory on YouTube. I post a lot of different time lapses and I'm looking to do more with the channel. You can also help me out by liking the video and sending it to a friend. If you want to support me further, you can do that on Patreon. On Patreon, I post behind the scenes, things I'm working on, and updates on longer projects. As always, thank you.